Hello YouTubers, so today we are, sorry about my rottweiler snort in there, we are going to look at how to achieve um, items out of a mould. Okay, so I've picked four very different ones, um, very awkward ones, this one's probably the worst one. Uh, this one's quite a shallow one, and this one you want to get the um, inside so it makes it look like a gem. So she's not, she's rather warm, it's quite warm out today, um, enjoying the uh, sunshine. So, right, let's have a look then. So we're going to, I've got some green because it's colour, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Just a smidge in. So I'm going to start with this one. This is quite a shallow one, so it does cause issues of its own. So when you want to do it, you want a quite a pliable, I find it easy with a pliable um, clay. I don't put corn flour or corn starch, whatever you want to put in there. I don't put that in first, I don't feel like I need it. Okay, so I break a little piece off. And the way to do it is as long as it's soft, you should achieve a, a very good print. So I first learned how to do this when I was using and doing... Um, fondant which is much much harder to work with than clay so this is a bit like a dream really working with clay in there so first thing you're going to do is just going to push down the first bit okay now you're going to have too much that's fine so with the side of your thumb this piece here you're going to push and then any excess will come off now don't worry about the very skinny pieces here because we're going to deal with them in a minute. So I'm going to push and, and swipe again. And push and swipe. Now the, the art to this is trying to keep it in the in the mould. Okay, because it's not that simple. Because it's a shallow one. It makes it much, much more difficult. So just keep pushing downwards. And it will just push the excess clay down and out to the bottom. Okay, don't worry about finger marks and that because don't forget this is actually the back. So we're not going to worry too much about it. See how it's coming out again. So you've just got to keep making sure it's, it's in and it's in each time. It's in and it's in. Did that make sense? Probably not. See, it's coming out again. Now, some people would say if you use cornstarch, that would be easier because it wouldn't stick to your fingers, which is probably true. But I don't want to add anything to my clay that is going to dull the, the colourings down. And next time I come to use it for something else, I don't want um, I don't want to have to worry and think to myself, oh goodness me, that's had cornstarch or whatever in it. But it would stop it from sticking to your fingers. So I mean it's entirely up to you if you would rather use a little bit of cornstarch. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just Gently going around and pushing it in into the mould. You don't want it overhanging too much. Okay, I'm going to pull that end off and I'm just going to squeeze it out. And like so. And then start sort of folding it back on itself. Just push the edges back in. It's that very top bit. It's because it's so thin, that's all. If, if if the clay wasn't as soft, it would probably work perhaps a little bit better. But I find it a little bit easier to work with a pliable, more pliable clay for myself. But I mean, it's entirely up to you. Some people say that it's it's better to to wait in, until the clay is cold and not quite so pliable. Okay. So I think I'm going to be happy with that, like so. Like I say, this is a very difficult one to use because it is so shallow. So just put it out, or a dog hair in it. That's the first and foremost thing. And there you have it. Now, if you have a bit of overhang like this here, all you need to do is get a knife and just give it a trim, and that will come off of there. So that's that one there. Okay, it looks pretty cool to me. Okay, so that's the shallow one, shall we say. Okay, so the next one is the chain one. This is very, 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 very difficult. But if you do it properly, 
and it shouldn't be too bad. Now, being a pliable clay, if you, you use it and it's very, very pliable, it will make it easier if you put it in, in pieces and then push down on it. Because what it'll do is um, mix, it'll mould together properly. So, first thing you need to do is just make a long, long bit like so. Now I'm going to pick um, this one here. I'm going to go along this back here because it's not quite so easy to do. Okay, so we're going to do quite a thin, quite a thin um, piece of clay because this one's awkward in a different way because it's it's very small and it's very um, awkward to get round, shall we say? So you've just rolled it out. Now you're just going to pull it open and then gently push it in. Pull it open. See? Now don't worry if it's not enough because like I say, because we've made it a little bit warmer, we can come along now and um, and change it. Okay? So we're just going to go down like so until we run out of clay. Just pushing it and opening it up. When you Where you want it in, you've just got to pull it down, open it up like so. like that pushing it down each time it's a little bit on the fiddly side but you'll manage it's okay I mean I've only ever used this three times um, once was on a goblet which we'll be doing a goblet film which I will show you so I shall probably keep this green that I'm making now okay so just keep going down as long as you want it I mean, once you've got it out and you, you get it back out and it's what you want, you can cut it to size and keep the rest if you wanted to. So, again, try to make sure that it's still in the in the, in the the mould. You don't want it sort of coming out the side. Right, so there we have one side of it done. That one seems a bit thick there, so we just push it down and it will, it will spread itself out and where you want it to go and where it's allowed to go like so right so we're going to roll another long bit and first off what we're going to do is go around all the bits weren't long enough or weren't thick enough to fill the um fill the mold and you're just going to put a little piece in the top like so and It's literally because this is where it comes into its own because I use clay that's quite uh, soft it a good bit of push in and all of a sudden it's um it molds together very very easily so there's another bit down here look there that needs pulling back there sorry sorry folks got a hot fat rock roller Okay, so here again, there's another one here, look. Now you could incorporate it into the other side if you wanted to. So go down and then push that round. I think I'll probably put too much in there now. But again, just keep pushing on it and it'll go where you allow it to. And then you go, if you keep going like that, you won't see any joins. It'll mould itself together. If you've got a piece that's not moulding itself together, it generally means it's probably um, too small. So you need to add a little bit to the top. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to work my way down. I hope, folks, you can see and I haven't got my hands in the way too much. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Pick up my knife, please. Just pulling it back. And you want it nice and thin so it just slips in there nicely. Like so. Or not. Like so. And then just bring it round and just pull in the end off. Thank you. Like so. Now we can see instantly that that's a little bit shallow there. So I'm going to make a very thin piece. Which you shouldn't need to pull it apart to do. It should just go straight in there, like so, and then down this side as well. 
I mean, these these molds are absolutely fantastic. They're from Katie Sue Designs Limited. I would recommend you get them. They are silicon molds. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, they're very very good. So again, round that edge, pull it off, and then if it's not like I say, you've still got a join there. And if you just top up the clay, if you like, now you can see straight away that's now becoming nice and full. So I'm going to do this side bit here, which I know is going to need topping up. So little pieces nice and thin so in that join there now these are a nightmare to get out of the, the out of the the case uh, the mold silicon molds they're not easy okay but we'll cross that bridge in a minute especially something like chain link because you don't want any of it to um you see how that end then disappeared that, that I put there because I, I just squidged it and because my like I say my clay is cold it made it just disappear <coughs> now now now's the time that if you're going to make sure that your clay is nice and neat in here if you do this at this point now you won't have anything to sit and cut around when you've done so now is a good time to make sure it's completely in the mould, it's not overhanging the edges. You don't want it overhanging. Right, I can see that that is slightly dipping there, so we'll just put a piece there, look. And then we're just going to tap it down nice and hard. See, and that just moulds straight into it, so we're going to go in that gap. Right, so that one's going to need, I can tell, need pulling back. There we go. Okay. There we go, and then we're going to go around this part here. And then we're going to go around there again, because I know it's it's slightly low. Just make it and roll it until you don't need big pieces. I would rather build up an item or an area than um, have to take it back out. It's easier to put it in than it is to take it out. Okay, okay, there we go, and then we're going to go straight into that gap there, nice and thin. I'm going to pull it apart to make sure we get it in there. Don't be afraid of it, and don't um, feel like you can't, you can't sort of... Don't don't be afraid. That's the easiest thing I can say to you. Is don't be afraid of it. It's it's just a mould. It will it will not come out if you bend it back or you do whichever. Trust me, it won't come out. So right, I'm just going to finish it off here. This one end, and then we'll get it out and show you how cool it is. I mean, certainly with the chain link, if there is a little bit that hasn't melt moulded together, it makes it look oldy worldy. It's it's I like that. Um, I'll show you my goblet in a minute, which I use this chain link on. And like I say, we're going to do a video after. Um, my next one will come out, it'll be a goblet, which I promised you this one. But I just thought I would just sort of put this on because it isn't easy. And people, I mean, these are great um, moulds. They really are really great moulds. So it, it's nice to share what I've learned and how to do it. Oh. Okay, so we're just going to pop it in the end there. No, we're not. We're going to pop it in the end there. There we go. And then we're going to go back across this piece. See how that just moulds beautifully together. I know you're probably thinking that it's a bit boring watching me, but unfortunately it's not a very quick process. Like I always say to everybody on all my videos, take your time there is no rush there is no um, it's not uh, it's not going anywhere there's no competition or anything just take your time and see how you get on okay it takes a little bit of practice so don't fall at the first hurdle and think oh I'm not doing that again because 
after the perhaps the second or third time you'll have it it'll be there you you'll have it and then you'll be able to once you've mastered one mold you'll be able to master any mold so don't feel like defeated right okay so i think that's in there so just go along and give it a last tap down make sure and try and push it as hard as you can okay like so right so the next thing we're going to do is you generally go around and just pull the edges apart you see where sometimes in some places it was stuck so you're just going to pull that apart like so so it's, it's nice and loose all the way up like so you don't want it stuck on anything and then you're going to start and you're going to bend the mold now when you bend the mold all you want to do is to start and get that first piece out so just pull out that first piece I'm just going to zoom you in for this bit right okay so we're just going to pull out that first piece like so and then gently tease the next piece out by bending you've got to bend quite violently but because they're silicon they it works You've got to bend the silicon mould. And it will, it will come out. See so, you now my last one's stuck. Just bend it as much as you can to get it out. There we go. So there you have it. The green chain link must split the clay a little bit, but don't worry. Because it's polymer clay, if you just give it a little rub over, if there's any areas, just a little rub and it's uh, it's all done. So that's what it looks like. So you've got a very pliable, very cool chain link. Now I used mine on this last time I did some, if you can see my goblet. It goes all the way down the handle onto the base. Very cool. And I just painted it so you can do it in whatever color you want to but there you go so that's that one so let's push that to the back actually if we put them forward just a little bit you'll be able to see them right let me zoom you back out now okay so the next one we're going to have a go at is this one now this one's quite a deep one okay this is a dragon I use this probably more often than not um, Again, there he is on the side of that glass, if you can see. Okay. Now, because it's quite a deep one, we're going to start off in all of the deeper parts. Now, the only thing I don't like about this bit is the um, fire, so I don't do that bit. I start it from the end of his nose, which is here. So, to start with, we're going to go through and we're going to do all the little really deep nooks and crannies and the hard bits to get to okay so the first part is in the wing back here if you can see that it's really dark really deep sort of piece so we're going to put that in there and just pull it off like so okay just make sure it's nicely tucked in there and then we're going to do his face again not as deep as that last part but quite awkward so I'm just going to push down all of what I had into there. Now you want to do his horn, so I want to get his horn in there. So again, just like we were doing with the other one, I like to build mine up. Like I said on the last one, it's easier to take out a uh, put in than it is to take out. So I'd rather put in nice and slowly and get all the the detail and everything that's in here. And then know that whatever I've got in here just needs good patting down. Which afterwards, when you get to the top bit, putting the top piece in, it will just go straight in. Okay, so now we've got the body. I'm going to use a larger piece for this. Now, this is quite cold, I haven't had this in my hands. 
so it's, as you can see it's quite a bit stiffer but that's okay because it won't keep lifting not like the other one I think the other one's probably got a little bit too warm now I just can use this one so just breaking off small pieces I can see quite a gap down there if you can see that you see it so we're going to poke a little bit down there okay and round on his tail snore your oilers <laughs> Okay, and round we go. Now you'll notice I'm starting to leave longer parts now. So if I've got a piece like this, I'm going to leave it and put the rest of it down. So like that. And then I'm just going to squeeze that bit down. Now the worst nightberry bits on this is um, this bit here. These bits. Yeah, that's like some spiny bits on the back. Okay, so I'm just going to long, long pieces and then just putting them in there. But see how that's again, it's, it's a shallow part of the mould. Okay, so just roll it, poke it in, pull it off. Roll it, poke it in, pull it off roll it, poke it in, put it off. See how they come out? They're really, really awkward, these bits. So now I'm just going to stay clear of that. Um, I don't think I need to be going anywhere near that. So the next bit I'm going to do is this, the rest of his tail. So kind of get it into the shape that you need it. And then you'll find it much easier to get it in the first sort of level before. Uh, I mean, if those, I'm not too worried about those bits. If they don't come out, they don't come out. I usually get them to come out, but I don't lose any sleep over it if they don't. Okay, so we're pretty much there, I think. So now I'm going to put my top top one in. Now I'm just go around and start building up the levels. And now it's where you want. Oh no, for Mr. Foot out. But it's kind of getting to the point. This is where you want this to all mould together. But you're going to poke it around and just keep pushing it, and it will it will do it itself. Okay, I'm just squeezing that into a. Oh, my hands are green. Look. Like so. Again, nightmare piece. <laughs> oh dear. I might have to use a little bit of corn starch on my fingers um, to stop it from sticking and pulling out. But I'll, I'll evaluate that in a minute. Now, all would do by all means use a tool. If you want to use a tool to uh, ensure that everything's where it should be. And you don't go over. Do be careful if you use a metal one. Because you don't want to damage your mould. There we go, look. I'm just starting to push it down now. We'll sort out any bits that come out later. After we've... So you want to mould it all together basically so where it was we put it in in parts and just kneading it all together like so okay so you can stop half done Sorry, just drinking my coffee there. Anybody that knows me knows I'm, um, I'm coffee mad. But 
that was the coffee fairy that came in and dropped that off, which I thought that was very nice of him. Right, so we're just going to put these on here. And this is Fimo clay, by the way, I'm using. I was going to use some Sculpey, Super Sculpey, but I've, it's a much firmer, and I just wanted to... It's not an everyday clay. It's, it's not something I use every day. Fimo is what I use every day. Right, I'm going to redo those feet in a minute. Let's get this on first, and those, because it's just not... Where I'm sort of pushing it down, it's stretching the... The clay, so we might even be able to get it in one go. Perhaps they might go in on their own. Okay, so just kneading it down, use your fingers, your thumbs. If it starts to go over the edge, just push it back in, it'll find its own way of where you're allowing it to go. Bearing in mind that it doesn't have to be too tidy on the back because it's the back. But what you don't want to do is not mould it properly and it fall apart. Right, so now we're going to have a look and see where we need to top up any pieces. There we go. That's it, it's starting to really sort of come together now. Like I say, this is what I call a deep mould. This is probably easier to use, but again, you've got to have quite a lot of patience. Um, otherwise, you'll find it very, very difficult. You, you've got to kind of write off. I think if you allowed yourself half an hour at least, then I think you'd, you'd sort of be on a winner. But if you're using this sort of thing, you're generally you're, you're a sort of a crafter. Um, might be a beginning beginner I don't know uh, you might just struggle with um, molds but sometimes they're quite difficult sometimes they're not that's why I tried to find three very very different ones right so now I'm going to have a go at doing the these back bits here, like we did before, into a point, push it on. Now this time I'm going to sort of mould it in as I go, into a point again, pull it off and mould it. Keep leaving my fingernail marks in it, and I generally cut my nails off. Some people only have beautiful nails when they do their crafting videos, but mine just never look like that. Right, okay, so see how much easier that is going in now than what it was earlier. So I think that's probably something that I will do in future, is like little wiggly bits like that. Wait till last to do it. Because you're not pushing around too much. Not like you were before. Okay, I'm going to lay that on there. Because it seems like a dip. Okay. Right, I'm not going to manage to mould that all the way in. But as long as it's... Quite well moulded. Like so. I did notice one dip. Oh, you can only just see me. Sorry about that, folks. I did see one dip just here, which I wasn't overly happy with. So I'm just going to put a very small amount in there. Like that. So it's just a little bit low and you want to make sure you've got the built up areas otherwise you won't get all the detail that you want that's in the mould okay so pushing it to the outsides like it should be okay and now we're going to do the feet all right like 
like so. So into a point again. We're going to push it in. It's perhaps a little thin. Let's turn it around. We're going to push it in. Pull it off. And then that bit, we'll just leave it down like that, and then we'll rip, sort of mould that in. These are so shallow, it's ridiculous. See, and this is what keeps happening. And my clay's not particularly warm anymore because it, I'm peeling it from um, bullet willow. Because I'm pulling it from the heart bigger block, that's not really been held onto or touched as per se. So, okay, last toe. It's official. I hate toes. There you go. And I'm going to put that in front there. So, like I did with the other ones, just to reinforce the toe bit to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't fall off. Oh my goodness, I don't like doing toes. Okay, so that's that's pretty much where we're at. So we're going to do the same again, go round. We're going to loosen the edges. Willow. Willow. Sleepy me, sleepy girl. Willow. <laughs> okay, and we're going to bend. Exactly the same as what we did before, like so. And there you have your dragon. Now I'm just going to hold that up so you can see it. So you can see that back leg that we had trouble with there. It's quite floppy, but once it's on something, it will it will shore it up. And these bits here, the spikes on the back. But I'm sure you'll agree with me. He is, in all fairness to him, a beautiful grand fella. So I'm just peel these bits off my desk. So because we made sure it was in the actual mould, there is no cutting required on that one. So we'll just put that one there. Now I'm just going to show you what I would do with this. And my husband's brought me in this um, feather. Because, let me zoom you in. Now because of... Um, we never got it in the mould correctly. Can you see this bit here? It's not meant to be there, look. Okay, so all I would do is just come along here with my knife and just cut out any bits. But if you'd have made, if we, if you, if I'd have made sure it was in the, the mould to start with, this wouldn't be necessary. So it actually takes you, it saves you time um as you go so do be aware of that and there you go so now that is complete and looks absolutely fabulous right so we've got one more mold to do so i'm going to put that back over here and that's this one now this one is just i don't even know where i got it um it's gems can you see that sparkling very very pretty now on this goblet that's what these are but I kind of rushed it so I didn't get the full effect of them so we'll have a go now and see what happens so I'm going to pick the medium -y kind of size one I don't want it massive although we could try a big one see what happens so we'll go for this one which is a smallish one and I'm just going to make sure my my clay is in a ball like so and pop it in now what you're doing now is you're just going to knead it this is an odd odd mold because it's very wibbly and it's not the easiest i've ever used but you know it's not too bad i've i've used worse molds let's put it that way so you want it flat on the back don't forget to do that because when you come to stick it on something if it's not flat you won't get it on. Okay. Now I've given that a bit of a good plumbing in there. So you'll be able to see it from the bottom how well it is in there. Now it's got little feet on the bottom of this one, but they've never really worked. Well, I don't know that they've worked. They just kind of wiggled some side to side. That might be why it makes it so uneven. 
Okay, so there we go, it's in there. So we're just going to push the bottom and out it pops. And there you have your own beautiful stone. So you could use these as um, your gems to stick on things. That one's come out quite well, okay. So we'll put that to one side. And we're going to do the big one in the middle. I've never done this one. Because it's quite large. So get your clay and make sure it's a nice ball, nice and soft. So we, today we've done very, four very different um, moulds. So that's that's good. And I hope you found it very, very interesting. Please hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any of my videos. And you can go back and have a look at some others. I've got some good ones on there. Um, I do a variety of, of craft, clay, knitting, my cr Joy Cricut, amazing little machine. Um, lots of different things, lots and lots and lots of different things. So please do hit that subscribe button. I've had some fantastic um, support so far. But uh, I haven't been very well, which is why I've been a bit sort of slack on my dates that have come out. But I'm feeling a lot better. Okay, so instantly I can see that that's too big. So just shave the end off. Because we don't want to... I think that's still going to be very, very big, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to shave the side off of it again. Like so. Um, now we're going to have a go at putting it in. Now, I've probably made a mistake there by putting the cut end into this side. I should have left the cut end out um, because I don't want it, it to affect the mould and how it looks. So well, I'm just going to cut that top off because we need it flat so that it sticks to um, that dog hair. Look. Um, so it, when you use it, it's flat and it sticks to whatever you're putting it on. So just go along and scrape it off wherever you need to. It's like giving a haircut. I had a haircut the other day. My daughter is in nearly due to, to have a baby. So we're all very excited. Um, she's a hairdresser, so I never have to go to the hairdressers, which is great. But now she's got so big, she, it looks like she's carrying a bowling ball. And uh, she can't cut hair no more. So we all had our last haircut about two weeks ago, and that's it now. She normally does my husband's about every five weeks. So now I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see now. We're just all going to look like yetis by the time she has the baby. So we're all very excited. Sorry, my, my tummy. So we're all very excited. So so you're pushing it down like so. I mean, you could even, if you wanted to, put it flat on the table like that and just push it down like that. But you run a risk of it sticking to the table like that, which you can't see. So I'm going to do that again. So we're going to push it down. Like that. There's one way of getting it out is you can either push it out like we did the last one, or you could with a tile push it down to its bottom like so, and then when you peel this off, it should be stuck there. Perfect. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. How cool is that? Uh, until recent weeks, I didn't even know I had this one. So there you go. So we've got the chain, which was quite fiddly. The feather, which was really shallow. Ooh. Move that over there. And the dragon, which was quite a deep one. So I should keep all these and cook them in the oven. So do cook them in, the, when you cook them in the oven, obviously do it to your manufacturer's timer and timing. But that looks really good. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to put it on something that's curved, you must put it on it before it goes into the oven. Otherwise it will go flat and you won't be able to, to bend it round or anything like that. So thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, that would be great. Like I said, I've had some fantastic support so far. But I'm always on the look for extra. So thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.